Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Deanna Mate. Well, on this episode, we're getting together with the coaches of the 6A champions, Coach Keith Riggs of the 6A1 champions of Jinx Trojan, and Coach Lauren Montgomery of the 6A2 champions, Bixby Spartans. Well, let's start with the 6A1 game featuring Jinx and Edmund Santa Fe. They had perfect football weather at UCO Wantland Stadium as Edmund Santa Fe looked to beat Jinx for their first football state title. The Wolves started early with an 86-yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Angelo Rankin. It reminded me a little bit of Devin Hester and his Super Bowl touchdown. Jinx responded with a long drive that stalled but still came away with a 28-yard field goal by Max Passman. After an Edmund Santa Fe three and out, Jinx took the lead on a 27-yard touchdown pass from Steven Kittleman to Jaden Patrick. That made it 10 to seven after one quarter. The ensuing pooch kick away from Rankin bounced Jinx away, but it didn't turn into anything as Steven Kittleman was picked off by Angelo Rankin in the end zone. Another stall drive by the Wolves led to a 17-yard scamper by Grant Lohr. They had him bottled up, but he got out of the jam and the Trojans were off to the races. A Santa Fe three and out later, Lore rushed again to the goal line, but fumbled. Luckily enough, Jaden Patrick was right there to dive on it for the Trojan touchdown. But the Wolves weren't done yet. Talon Shetron with the 50 yard catch from Scott Pfeiffer and a 26 yard run by Angelo Rankin setting up Scott Pfeiffer's quarterback keep that fooled the entire Jinx defense, including our camera guy. Jinx Max Passman added a 33-yard field goal, and it was 27-14, Jinx headed into halftime. In the second half, Jinx came out and scored on a Griffin Ford seven-yard touchdown run. Then a 32-yard Cade Stacy pick six made it 41-14, midway through the third. Jinx takes home their 17th gold ball with a 41 to 14 victory. Let's go ahead and get into it. I mean, winning state, uh, first state championship for you. Although you've been to that state championship game, couldn't really cross that threshold. How does it feel to be a state champion? Well, it feels wonderful. You know, uh, it's the culmination of so much work that goes you know, all, really all the way back to January when you start uh, with some of these kids in off season. And so you're talking about thousands of hours put in by all these kids and by our coaches and uh, to have it all come to fulfillment, to, to, to achieve that ultimate goal of winning a, a state championship is awesome. So take me back to, you know, first quarter, running out of the tunnel, you're getting ready to start opening kickoff, they return it back. Let's put put up, put me in the shoes <laughs> of, of the head ball coach here. How did you feel in that moment? Like, tell me, like, brutal honesty, your exact thoughts. Well, your initial response is uh, a little bit of uh, anger, maybe. You're, just, you're upset. Um, but, you know, Santa Fe is an outstanding team. We were not going to keep them from making some big plays. And, um, you know, the real message right after that happened to our team and uh, was, you know, it's a long game. It's just the beginning. Uh, we need to go respond. And uh, credit to our, our senior leaders, you know, uh, you kind of a kick in the pants like that. You can go two ways. You know, you can let it impact how you how you respond or you can you can respond appropriately. And our kids did a great job responding uh to that adversity on that play. I mean, you mentioned about Edmund Santa Fe and how talented that bunch is over there. I mean, what did you think of them before the game started with all your film study? And then what was your takeaway after the game as far as now that you've had a chance to, you know, digest it and, and think about everything that happened between the, the white lines? Well, going in, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to, to talk about and focus about. They've got some outstanding football players, uh, some guys that are going to play on Saturdays. Um, the receiver, Shetron, uh, Angelo Rankin, who plays receiver and corner. There are two defensive ends, Barnett and Oliver. Uh, those guys stand out on film, certainly. But um, just like anybody that makes it to a state championship game, as a team, they were playing at a really high level in the playoffs. And that's what got them there. Um, their D-line plays really hard. 
Uh, their O-line was doing a great job. They were running the ball so well. They got two very capable running backs, and then they also moved Rankin in, you know, into the backfield at times. So a um, <clears throat> lot of weapons. You can't focus on just one guy and try to take one guy away. So, um, you know, it was going to – we knew it was going to be very challenging. Uh, looking back after the game, I, you know, nothing has really changed about my opinion of their outstanding football team with a bunch of great playmakers. And, uh, you know, when you, in any game against two good teams, um, you can look back and say, you know, three to five plays, if they'd have just gone differently, you know, maybe you're talking about a different outcome or you're talking about a game that goes down to the wire. Uh, we were just fortunate enough to, to be the ones that came out on top on those three to five plays. When we come back, Coach Riggs talks about the impact of the pandemic on their football season. Ford High School Weekly will be right back. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking to the head coach of the 6A1 champion, Jinx Trojans, Keith Riggs. Speaking of the game, I mean, what were your thoughts, I mean, generally about the whole ordeal and how did y'all, you know, make those plays at the end to kind of, you know, take the game away and, and run away with it? Well, we've we got a great group of kids and a lot of guys that are capable of making plays. Um, and I would think that that's one of the challenges in playing against us is we've got so many guys, it's hard to focus on one guy. Uh, Jaden Patrick made a bunch of big plays offensively and defensively. Um, you know, even Ty Walls, who first play of the game gets hurt, you know, great play first and 15 and we get a first down and and cross midfield. Um, Glenny Jones, who stepped up, you know, with Ty being hurt, had a big game, five catches and, and a really nice kickoff return. Um, our offensive line, who, who doesn't get any credit because they don't have any snaps, but they're the reason we've rushed for so many yards and just uh, – over the course of the season, I think all of those things put together um, kind of showed itself in the playoffs and in, in the state championship game. And uh, with all those guys making plays and doing their job, uh, we were able to make enough plays to get up on top. The the clock hits the double zeros and, and you look at the scoreboard and, and you're a state champion and, and you've been on this stage before, but never getting to hoist up that gold ball. What was the feelings that you were feeling inside? I mean, just from from just that first reaction. Well, I <laughs> I missed that part. Um, I don't. I guess it's not everybody knows. I was in the I was in the locker room for the second half. Um, I had a migraine and um, I couldn't come back out for the second half. So. Uh, my first chance to watch the second half and see the clock kick down to zero was um, Sunday. But, uh, you know, I was very confident in our coaches and our team uh, when I was unable to return that they would handle things. We got great leadership amongst our coaching staff and our seniors that, uh, you know, they just went out in the second half and took care of business. So, I mean, Coach, I mean, tell us about that experience and why, why did you have so much confidence in your staff and your players to get it done there towards the end without you? Well, I think more than anything, because they've shown they can do it uh, time and time again throughout the season. Um, you know, our coaches, we have an outstanding group of coaches, uh, starting with Coach Gaylor on defense and Coach Calabrese, our offensive coordinator. Uh, but all the way down, every one of our position coaches um, are outstanding young men, first and foremost, but they do a great job coaching our kids as well. And uh, for our seniors, um, a veteran group, very many of them were in the state championship game last year. So uh, they understood uh, the stakes in the game. They understood the um, everything that comes with a state championship game and, and the the, what it means to be in that game and what you have to do to win that game. So they really came through in the second half, I think. And, and again, they, they just took care of business. 
Well, Coach, y'all did that very well, and y'all have a gold ball to, to prove it. And uh, from, from me here and, and to your team, I just want to say congratulations on, you know, the, that first one. I'm sure it's the first of, <laughs> of more to come. And I want you to also tell those guys over there at the field house, I said congratulations as well, because it's glad to see that uh, tradition continues at, at Jinx. I will do it. Thank you very much. So Jinx gets their first football championship since 2015. And the Bixie Spartans get their sixth 6A2 championship and third in a row. We'll take a look at that one and meet Spartans head coach Lauren Montgomery when Ford High School Weekly continues. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. 6A2 championship game featured the Bixie Spartans looking for their second three-peat, facing the young upstart Choctaw Yellow Jackets. The Bixie Spartans started off a little slow, but got a break when the Spartans punt bounced through the hands of a Choctaw returner and recovered by Bixie Spartans' Zach Blankenship. The Spartans were able to punch it in on Jersey Rob's two-yard run to go up 7 to nothing. Choctaw responded with a 38-yard touchdown pass from Stillwassel to Latrell Ray to tie it up 7 to 7. But there was no containing Braylon Presley Saturday night as he ran for 28 yards to put the Spartans back up on top 14 to 7 after the first quarter. In the second quarter, they tacked on a 29-yard field goal by Connor Nolan to extend the Spartan lead to 17 to 7. A Braylon Presley fumble gave the Yellow Jackets hope though. With less than two minutes left in the first half, they immediately capitalized as Wesley Ziegler took a pass from Stillwassel and sped 85 yards down the field to pull Choctaw within three, making it 17 to 14. Just seconds before halftime, Bixby went for a touchdown, but that Choctaw defense dropped Presley at the three, keeping the Bixby lead at three. The second half was a tight battle. Choctaw drove down to the seven, but a Jacob Snyder interception took away Choctaw's scoring chances but it wasn't over for the Yellow Jackets. A bad snap by Bixby on fourth and five gave the ball back to Choctaw with just under six minutes left. The Yellow Jackets converted on fourth and nine with a pass from Wassel to Terrell Davis. Choctaw had their chance, but three sacks by Jake Puckett in the final four plays sealed the victory for the Spartans who bring home their sixth title in seven years. My man, Lauren Montgomery, coach, how's it going? It's going good. I tell you what, um, um, just almost feel relieved after 2020 and, and all the, the craziness of this year, just like everybody's kind of dealing with, but, but super grateful that we were able to get through a football season. Yeah, and, and not only get through it, but continue the dominance. I mean, a, a season full of, you know, surprises and adversity going on to ESPN and putting up a top notch performance, having a national ranking. I mean, tell me, how, ha how was the season for you in general, just all together? Well, it was good, obviously, um, you know, being able to have an undefeated season and win um, all of your ball games, um, you're, you're just super grateful. But I think uh, once we're all past, and we know it's not just 2021, but once we're all past um, the coronavirus and, and we can hopefully move on with normal life, I think all of us will look back and say, you know what, there are some good things that came of 2020. And, uh, you know, you had mentioned it. One of those things for us was, um, you know, kind of lucking out and getting an ESPN ball game. Um, you know, ESPN U game was uh, uh, cool enough, but then to have a college cancellation and get picked up on the big ESPN, I think was pretty cool. Um, you know, cause I know myself along with, uh, um, tons of people just go home and flick on the TV. And the first thing you do maybe is, you know, what's on, uh, what's on sports center, what's on ESPN. And I, so that was cool. Do you think that you guys put Bixby on the map this year nationally or is, or do you, in your opinion, has the have they always been? You know, it's it's interesting, you know, and I've, I've kind of thought about that, um, you know, because you look at, you know, I know this year we've been able to um, crack into some of the national rankings, and that's a really cool deal. Um, but um, I think it's almost the way it is in Oklahoma. You have to have almost a, a resume. You could, you could have a really good team just one year and maybe not crack into that. And so – I think it's it's kind of a culmination, maybe, of getting some of the recognition that we that we've gotten of um, 
several years of hard work and uh, dedication that that kids and coaches in our program have put in. That state championship game, kind of a low scoring affair. No, I don't think anybody expected that, especially from the Bixby Spartans. What what was the transpire of that? What how did that come about? Well, you know, first off, um, we knew it was going to be a good ball game. Um, we played Choctaw earlier in the year. They started numerous young sophomores, first year starters. And, um, you know, quite frankly, they got after us, um, you know, in our first game. It ended up being an 11-point ball game. We felt like we had left some things out there, but, but they were a very good team. And so, couple that, that was their last loss. Um, couple that with the momentum they had going into our game. Um, you know, they're on a, on a winning streak, um, have beat Stillwater, um, quite possibly the best Stillwater team that, that we've seen. Um, the, the little bit of film I saw of Stillwater, they beat those guys. And so we knew it was going to be a, a close ball game. Um, you know, they did an excellent job of, of covering us and containing us and, uh, you know, stopping our big play and stopping us in the red zone. But, I mean, I think the story um, was our defense. Our defense came through, and, and uh, we gave up a couple big plays in the first half, but our defense came, came through big down the stretch and made some really good plays. And, and I could go through uh, guy after guy after guy, but 10 sacks uh, in the game or 10 and a half sacks, um, just, just hats off to, um, you know, all of our kids on our team for hanging in there. We'll talk more with Bixie Spartans head coach Lauren Montgomery about this most unusual 2020 football season when Ford High School Weekly returns. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're visiting with the head coach of the 6A2 champion, Bixby Spartans, Lauren Montgomery. That defense, and I mean, they've been one of the top-notch defense in the state through for as long as I've been covering high school football out here. But when you saw that Choctaw team and you looked at them on film, did you, was this a team initially that you thought you could make a, it a one-dimensional game and, and, and do a good job of, of, of stopping the run? Well, um, not necessarily. I mean, um, make it a one-dimensional game, maybe uh, force them to, to throw the ball. But um, the nature of their offense, um, they're going to be able to – and they have some good design to get their guys on the perimeter. We felt like, you know, maybe some of the inside run we could have some success with um, and, and get them maybe behind the chains and force them to um, throw the ball downfield. But, um, you know, as – prolific as they had been the last few weeks, um, you know, we knew we weren't going to be able to shut down any one phase of their game. On the other side of the ball, though, offensively, did you think it would be that hard and that difficult passing against that Choctaw defense? Um, I mean, quite honestly, um, no. Um, you know, they did an excellent job. You know, they um, – obviously, everybody knows uh, their talented quarter, corner, Mukes, um, number two. Um, is just a phenomenal player. He's a, he's a Division One player, and he's he's he's, he's large. He's a, he's a big, long kid that can, mm -hmm. you know, match up with with our big wide receivers, and then it can also match up with their speed. And so, you know, he's able to take, you know, possibly take away your best guy, and then um, they got uh, a bunch of other talented guys that can play in man coverage and. And Dion, you've been a defensive back. When you got guys that can play man coverage, it allows you to, um, you know, overload the box and, yep. and you know, um, get extra hats down in there. And it, and it seems like, you know, all night long, you know, the, the extra hat was, um, you know, making a shoestring tackle on us. And, you know, uh, with that being said, Braylon still had 200 yards or over 200 yards on the ground, which is, uh, which is an excellent performance. He was breaking tackles that – his sophomore year or freshman year he wasn't breaking and and i think it's a result of him putting on a little bit more weight um getting stronger in our weight room he's a 450 pound squatter um he has 100 percent attendance he's one of our steak eaters in the summer and um you know all those little things over time are going to build up and it might be a broken tackle in the fourth quarter you never know and and that's just kind of the the beautiful thing about the way braylon trains and all of our kids train is um, I don't know if that one rep 
or I don't know if that one day in the weight room will win us a ball game. But all those things add, added up over time will. Going back to that state championship game, one of the questions that I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, last series of the game, defense needs to make a stop, and you guys come up with three sacks. How is that even possible, Coach? Well, I, I think our kids really wanted it. Um, we had some exceptional efforts out of a lot of our kids. And on, on that last drive, um, one of the guys that's on our leadership council, one of the guys that um, is a junior, a leader on our team, Jack Puckett, a junior linebacker, um, you know, came up with a couple of huge sacks. I know junior nose guard Kai Roller came up with a huge sack. Um, and uh, for them to be able to endure, especially when the other team was um, beginning to get into field goal range, um, you know, I just thought showed the character um, of all of our young men. So, Coach, now that it's all said and done and, and everything's in the books, I mean, how do you think this 2020 Bixby Spartans state championship team should be remembered in the, in the, in the history books? Well, I think if you look at this senior class, um, you know, being undefeated for two years um, and, and being part of a, a crazy winning streak, they haven't lost a game since the first game or they didn't lose a game since um, the first ball game of their sophomore year. Um, you know, and you look at Mason Williams, who started every one of those games, um, you know, that's a pretty, um, pretty crazy accomplishment. Uh, for them. That's something for them to be proud of, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, undefeated seasons are extremely difficult to come by, especially when you play a schedule like we play um, and the caliber of opponents we were able to pick up this year. Um, and so I don't know. I think I think that is going to be something that our guys are going to remember their entire life. I'd like to thank Jinx head coach Keith Riggs and Bixby's coach Lauren Montgomery for sharing their championship stories with us. Check yourview.com slash OK every day for highlights and replays of the Ford Game of the Week. And remember, guys, only the best in Oklahoma make it to Ford High School Weekly. So until next time, thank you for watching, and I'm your host, Deanna Bidet.